This is a video for engagement in places for geography A level um, for the Edexcel specification. So the first part of the spec you need to know for engagement in places is about election turnout. So I've just got a few um, facts here about election turnouts and who's not likely to vote. So those that are poor, black or young, those sort of people are least likely to vote. Poor people, um, they feel less likely to vote because of social polarization. This is this is basically inequality arising from different income groups. So you've got a group of people and they're being segregated segregated according to their income. So higher income people segregated from lower income people because they just don't want to be associated with them. And that could cause um, poor people to feel out of place and therefore not want to vote. Also, black people, there's a lot of conflict arising um, nowadays because of a lot more racial harassment and because um, England is a dominantly white country um, and over time more and more black people have come in, not just black but like, you know, Arabic people, Eastern European people, people from different cultures but generally, uh, generally black people who have got British nationality are least likely to vote and also the young because due to globalization nowadays uh, young people they feel a lot more connected to the world in general via social media and not as much to their local area and they just don't seem to have an interest really in election and uh, in elections and politics nowadays so they are least likely to vote and in 2014 84.5% people voted during the Scottish independence election. Um, so as you can see, um, Scottish independence is what the majority of Scots want today. And that's why such a high number of people actually voted, because that's what, they've, that, that's, that, that's what they want. Um, they really want to be independent. So if people are really interested in what the action is, is for the election they're most likely to vote because they do want that to happen so in this case they do want scotland to be independent therefore they do vote in 2015 7.5 million people that were eligible didn't register to vote and the population of, of the uk is about 64 million approximately and 7.5 million of these people that are eligible didn't register to vote and that's quite a high number when you think about it because it just shows how how much people don't really want to take part in elections nowadays and 66.1 percent of those who registered did not vote and that's a pretty shocking number uh local election turnouts um very very low at 36 percent people don't really feel that attached to their local areas anymore because of so much immigration um different projects going on they just don't really want to take part so the local election turnout was only 36 percent um, the UK actually has a very large turnout difference. Um, only 44% of 18 to 24 year olds voted. Um, that's a pretty shocking number because it's usually older people who tend to vote, except the younger people, what's, what happens in these elections is going to impact them in the long term because they're going to live longer um, after this election, whereas older people... It sounds quite horrible, but they haven't got many years left to live. So what happens? It doesn't impact them so much. It impacts more on the younger people. So two examples of election turnout. We've got Manchester, an urban city, and Cumbria, a rural county. Um, as I said before, the poor, um, the black, and the young are least likely to vote. And as you can see here, the median age in Manchester is 28 years old, whereas in Cumbria it's 49 years old. So already, um, uh, Manchester has, um, in, on average, younger people than in Cumbria. Also, 27% of people in Manchester are non-white, and 70% were were not um, were born in the UK. Sorry, whereas in Cumbria, 2% are non-white, and 95% were born in the UK so um, there's a lot fewer non-white people and there's a lot more people who were born in the UK so as I said before black people are least likely to vote and as well as other cultures like the um, Arabs Eastern European those cultures um, and also in Manchester 70% of people are deprived 
whereas in Cumbria only 50% are, so that shows that Manchester does on average have poorer people, and that all concludes to the 2015 turnout, election turnout of 52.9% in Manchester and 74.3% in Cumbria. So another thing you need to know about engagement in, in local areas is participation participation in the local community. So how do people actually participate in the local community? Well, they can run local events, so you know, food market or run allotments, um, help the elderly in care homes. They can also take part in protests against planned develop developments such as fracking because fracking does have quite a negative impact on the environment and protests, uh, protest groups that have been created because of this are and NIMBY, so that's not in my backyard. And there's also one called Frack Off, um, so Frack from Fracking. Um, they also help others in the community, such as the services Meals on Wheels, uh, where they deliver food to, to 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 elderly people who don't who can't really go to shops, and also workshops to improve resident resident skills so that they can get more qualifications and enter the workforce and gain a higher income. So, who supports these projects? Um, there are 90,000 grant organisations approximately and um, one very well known one is the National Lottery who does donate money and aid to, to support these projects. So attachment to an area, it does depend hugely on age, gender, length of residence, ethnicity and level of deprivation. So age, the older you are, generally you tend to feel more attached to your area because usually as you age, you've been in the area a lot longer. And also um, young people, um, there's a lot of social media nowadays, so they feel more attached to the world as a whole via social media and they don't really get involved in their local area, so they don't really feel that attached. Length of residence, um, the longer you've been in an area, obviously the more you feel attached um i'm not i'm not british um but i do feel attached to my local area because i have been here since i was born whereas my parents they wouldn't have felt so attached to, to where we live at the start because they hadn't been here so long and they wouldn't have really known many people known their way of life for example um ethnicity um in the uk for example if you're english you tend to feel more attached because you understand cultural references Someone who, you know, someone Eastern European, for example, that they, that that have just moved here, they wouldn't have been here so long to understand references, and also they wouldn't really feel English. Maybe like someone from Poland that comes over to England, for example, they wouldn't really feel attached straight away because they wouldn't understand their way of life, um, understand cultural con references such as it's raining cats and dogs, for example, um, or they wouldn't really feel very. Um, comfortable eating English food like fish and chips for example like um, if well, like when I talk to my family about if they ask me stuff about England and I tell them we have fish and chips they they, they get all confused really so it all kind of depends on the um, on your ethnicity and level of residence and also level of deprivation if you're really deprived um, you're poor you haven't got that much money you may not be spending so much and you may not have such a good quality of life in your area so you don't feel that attached. Also place identity, um, specific terms to a location can be an example of a person's pride um, of the location and this is often used in football so Sheffield United for example, the, the nickname for the supporters and the team is Blades because Sheffield um, used to be highly associated with the steel industry and it specialised a lot, so its economy was specialised in the steel industry, and so so yeah, this um, tradition uh, or this pride has continued, even though um, uh, it's no longer like dominant in the steel industry, but it has continued because that's something they are proud of, and that's how they they're identified as a place. So um, yeah, so I've got a, a question down here: Does technology have an impact on attachment? So as I said before, young people. Um, uh, due to globalization, uh, they do feel less attached to, to their local societies because um, they're spending a lot more time on their phone. They're more attached um, to different places via the Internet. Um, like me, for example, 
I used to, to go out a lot in my local area. I used to get involved in different things in, in like different events, but now I don't because of globalization and the uprights in social media. I just kind of go to like cultural places like I'll go to central London where it's very touristic or I'll go to different theme parks that are outside of London because I do live in London I won't go to one that's local to me like one of those fun fairs that comes to your local park so tech technology does have an impact on attachment um, because people aren't really getting involved in their local area as such and they're spending a lot more time on social media so conflicts between different groups about regeneration, um, studentification, that's basically when there's a large number of students living in an area, uh, you know, like uni students and uh, those sort of people. So students may want more nightclubs built, whereas older or lo long term residents don't because they don't want this disruption of like students coming in late at night in the early hours of the morning, drunk causing a lot of noise and disruption so there's there's going to be a conflict there based on the students' um, demand for what they want. Also different political views about immigration, um, Brexit for example uh, that's happening at the moment, um, people are, some people, well a, a large number of people are actually against immigration because they feel like they're taking all their jobs um, and you know things like that and it kind of does the for like like for me Brexit did depend a lot on people's education because um, like people that have lower qualifications they do um, they they're not really aware of the impacts that can arise from Brexit um, I won't go too into that that's more economics but um, but yeah those that have higher qualifications they did actually vote to remain because they know about the impacts that could, that can occur and if you do look up um, uh, a map of who voted remain and who voted to leave you'll see that oxford for example a large number did vote to remain and oxford obviously it has a lot of highly educated people whereas sunderland a town where there's not many highly educated people they all voted to leave because they don't know about the impacts it has um and this all uh, arose because of immigration so different political views about immigration can lead to conflicts and like me for example I've had a huge number of arguments and debates about Brexit with, with my friends so because we have different political views about immigration um, also different income groups which leads to social polarization that's basically segregation arising from um, different income groups income inequality and an example of this is Graham Park and Beefoot Park Two wards in North London, um, just a, a few metres away from each other, just separated by a road, really. Um, Graham Park is highly deprived, very low education, whereas Beefoot Park is the complete opposite, um, highly educated and very low deprivation. And this is in North London. And those in Beaver Park, they, they, um, they're on high incomes, whereas in Graham Park, um, they're usually on very low incomes. And this does lead to social polarisation because there's more regeneration occurring in Beaver Park, such a, a developed place, whereas not so much in Graham Park. So residents in Graham Park feel very um, segregated because of it. And finally, dominant cultures such as Hasidic Jews in Golders Green in North London, which can lead to marginalisation. And marginalisation, this is basically um, segregation um, and out-migration of a region due to a dominant culture. So Hasidic Jews in Golders Green, um, it's also in North London. If you go to Golders Green, there are a lot of Jews there around Christmas time. Um, you don't see any Christmas trees, no statues of Santa. It's all Hanukkah there. So you can tell that it's a very dominant culture. So if someone around Christmas time wanted to do a Christmas market there, I'm sure this would be highly opposed because they don't celebrate Christmas, they celebrate Hanukkah. And also in Halsden, there's a large number of Portuguese and Brazilian people. So um, you can actually go to Halsden, you'll just see loads of Portuguese and Brazilian shops. So they would probably be highly opposed to opening a large Polish or German supermarket, for example. So uh, conflicts do arise due to different views on cultures, income groups, uh, political views and studentification. And those are only a few examples. So to end um, this 
like PowerPoint. Uh, just got a quiz here. Um, so just pause the video, have a go at the at the questions, and I'll take you through the answers shortly. So the answers to to the quiz. Uh, what was the local election turnout in 2014? It was 36%. What is Manchester's median age? 28 years old. Give an example of a grant organisation. The National Lottery. Uh, why is Sheffield United's name Blades? Uh, it used to be dominant in the steel industry. And which religion is dominant in the area of Golders Green in London or North London? The Hasidic Jews. So that was um, a part of the section of inquiry question two for a generation for the Edexcel AS specification for geography. Um, thanks for watching and if you have any recommendations um, email me my emails in the description or just comment below and I should get back to you shortly so thanks for watching